Welcome to Everyday Yoga. My name is Christine. Thank you so much for joining me today as we do this uh, lovely little chair practice. As always, before you embark on any kind of exercise or movement program, I do ask that you check with your doctor, um, especially if you have any underlying health issues. Just make sure that you're really safe where you practice. Today, I am not practicing in a regular chair because we're moving in 34 days and I just sold my table and chair. So I'm just sitting on a yoga stool, um, but any kind of chair will do. Uh, if you have a back on your chair, that would probably be helpful, but not necessarily, and um, but not necessary. And if you have arms on your chair, um, that we can probably work around it, but if you have one without any arms, that might be a little bit easier to work with. Just make sure you're on um, a safe and secure surface. My stool is sitting on carpeting, so there's no uh, worry about slipping, but if you have a hard floor, you could always put your chair on a yoga mat or some other such surface so that you won't slide around. That being said, Let's sit up nice and tall, have our feet firmly planted on the floor. One benefit to using the yoga stool instead of a traditional chair is my feet actually touch the floor so I don't have to be on a box or yoga blocks here. Um, but let's sit beautifully tall, as my teacher Zora would say, sit beautifully tall, meaning lengthen the crown of the head towards the sky. Don't sit too far forward or too far back, but find that just right position here where everything is nice and balanced. Your sit bones are firmly planted in the seat. Again, feet firmly planted on the ground. We want to be fully grounded and in touch with the surfaces that we're using today. So let's go ahead and take a couple of deep breaths. Just connect with the body taking a little time to check in, notice what you might be feeling today. Notice what you might be experiencing. Are you breathing fast or shallow? Are you breathing slow and deep? Just let it be what it is. And then after you've had a moment to check in with where you are, let's try and find some space breathe a little bit deeper and a little bit more slowly all the way down into the belly and all the way back out and as you inhale kind of imagine that you've got a hot air balloon here and the little basket is down here in your pelvis and imagine that as you fill up the lungs and you push out the organs that are in your belly by that expansion of the lungs, that you're actually filling up this hot air balloon all the way to the tippy top. And then as you exhale, deflate that balloon. Basically let all that hot air out. So let's inhale, filling the basket, beginning to fill the balloon to fill all the way up to the tippy top, basically up to the collarbones, and then deflate that balloon all the way out. Inhale, filling up that hot air balloon, and I invite you to take a soft gaze or even close your eyes here if you're comfortable with it. And then when you reach the top of the balloon, exhale and One more time, let's take that nice big inhale. Fill the balloon full to bursting. When you think you've got all the air you can get, take one more tiny sip more. And then let it all out with a sigh. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and take our arms out to the sides. Inhale facing the palms towards the sky and reaching up, 
grab your left wrist in your right hand, stay here for the exhale, and then inhale to draw the left arm towards the right side. Stretching through the left side body, make some space in between those ribs. Continue to breathe here, those nice deep breathing breaths. Continue to ground both your sit bones firmly into the chair and both your feet firmly onto the floor. You can keep your head neutral here or you can look up to the left, gazing past your bicep. One more cycle of breath here. And then on your next inhale, go ahead and reach back up to center. Take it, let, stay here for the exhale. And then on your next inhale, take the right wrist in your left hand and tilt over to the left side. Again, stay grounded through the right side body. The tendency is for the hip to lift or the foot to lift, but really stay evenly rooted into the chair and onto the floor. Continue those big belly breaths. Maybe keep the head neutral, maybe gaze off over to the right. Making space between the right side ribs. Lifting up out of those hips. One more exhale here. And then the next inhale, inhale up to the sky and exhale, arms all the way down to your sides. Let's inhale, rolling the shoulders up and exhaling them back and down. Inhale, up and back and down. One more time, up and back. And then let's inhale the arms wide open and then exhale to bring the palms towards each other, rounding through the back and bringing the chin towards the chest. Inhale to open up the arms, open up the chest, lift the heart towards the sky, look up and exhale, rounding the back. This is kind of a modified cat cow. Inhale, we're opening into the cow position where the back kind of has a nice little dip there. And then exhale, rounding forward, drawing the belly button towards the spine. Nice and flowy, inhale. And then the arms float back, exhale. One more big inhale, gently look up without hurting your neck. And then exhale the hands back to the tops of your thighs or knees and back to that nice neutral spine. Take a little breath here, a big breath actually, to center yourself and reconnect with the breath. And then we'll bring our fingertips to our shoulders Inhale to make length through the spine, gently tucking the chin to keep the neck long. And then as you exhale, let's twist over toward the right. Inhale back to center, and then gently twist to the left. Inhale, center, twist right. Inhale, center, twist Continue this movement at your own pace, moving with the breath. We're just gently drawing to the sides without pulling or torquing ourselves. We want to always, always, always be gentle with this body. We put our bodies through a lot, physically, emotionally, mentally. They take a real hit. So let's be gentle with these bodies. One more time to the right. Inhale back to center. Exhale left. Inhale back to center. And then open the arms out to the sky and back down to your sides. Another breath 
here. Let's um, stretch out the forearms here. I know a lot of us are working from home right now and we might have wrist or elbows issues from dealing with a keyboard all day long. Um, I know I do. Uh, a really good stretch for that that you can do right there in your chair is take your right arm out to the side, palm facing towards the back, and kind of look down and see if you can't find that hand with your gaze. And what we're, what we're kind of going for here is like we're catching a baton. So you know how those baton people, I'm not sure what the, uh, uh, for the appropriate term for a baton person is, but you know, they throw them up in the air in the parade and then they reach back and grab it. So I'll turn to the side so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. But I'm reaching back with my fingertips as if I'm going to grab that baton that I have so gracefully thrown up into the air and I'm just going to grab it. So kind of look back like you're looking for that baton to land in your hand and then gently bring your head forward. Maybe tilt the chin down. This is a very slow, very subtle movement here. Just until you feel a nice sensation of a stretch right here on the top of the forearm. It can be a little bit tricky to find, uh, so I ask you to have some patience and maybe practice a little bit on your own time just to find that spot. But for me, I kept going way too far um, until I did find the spot. So it is very, very subtle. So look back at those fingertips like you're reaching for the baton and then gently start to bring the head forward. Maybe a little down. There it is right there. So it's not very much. It's just a very, very subtle movement. You can stay here continuing with that nice deep breath. Maybe making some little micro adjustments in the head and the neck to increase or decrease that stretch as you need it, as it feels good in your body. Stay here for another full breath and then release, and then let's switch to the other side. So now we're getting real tricky. I don't know about you, but most people are right-handed, and I am, so it would be real fancy and grab the baton with my left hand. So reaching back, keeping that shoulder relaxed and the shoulder blade down, keeping the rest of the body neutral and firmly rooted into the seat, into the floor. Reach back for the baton, look back, and then gently draw the head forward. Oh, there it is right there. Again, not very far. It's super duper subtle, but you'll know it when you feel it. So if you don't quite find it this time, uh, we'll practice this again in the future just to make sure that we've got that spot. Breathe here. Keeping neutral hips and a neutral spine. Maybe making some adjustments, seeing if you can deepen or lessen that stretch as you need to. Just releasing some of that tension from all the wrist action we all have. One more big cycle of breath here and then release. Now another stretch that you can do to counteract all that forearm action is take zombie arms, oh, like uh, Walking Dead or whatever. Just go ahead and stick the arms straight out, let the wrists relax, and wiggle the fingertips down here. Maybe draw the pinky in, and then the ring finger, and then the middle finger, and then the index finger. Maybe bring all the fingers in. And you can really pay attention here to what's going on in your forearms and find a spot that feels really good for you. And if you would like more, you can always take the opposite hand and maybe just give it a little bit extra pressure here to really draw out 
any tension that you might have in that forearm. So there are two ways to do that, and there will be more. So check back with us next again, or again next time. So let's go ahead and inhale the arms out, palms up towards the sky, palms meet overhead, and then we're going to exhale and bring the palms all the way down into a forward fold here. Normally this is done in yoga in a standing position, forward fold, Uttanasana, but we can do it in our chairs too. And I'm going to um, sit up while you stay folded so you can hear me and I'm not talking to my knees. Um, but as you stay there in that relaxed forward fold, let your weight of your head just drop out. Let it be heavy to draw space through the vertebrae in your neck and along your spine. As you inhale, feel how the skin of the back back stretches as your back broadens and as you exhale let your body just be surrendered so that the whole weight of the torso is resting on top of your thighs one more big breath there and forward fold and then we're gently just going to roll up one vertebrae at a time Drawing the spine up long, nice and slow. Inhale those shoulders up again, and then exhale back and down. One more time, let's inhale up to the sky where the palms meet. Exhale, hands to heart. Really push against those hands and then clasp the fingertips and draw the hands away from each other. Inhale, hands together, prayer position. Exhale and switch the clasp, pulling against those fingertips. So as you're doing that, you're drawing the shoulder blades closer together. Inhale, hands together, Anjali Mudra. Exhale, pull one more time. And last time, let's inhale, palms together. Exhale, opposite clasp. And then inhale, hands together, where we tilt the chin and say, Namaste. Thank you all so much for joining me today, for taking out your valuable time in your day. I really appreciate the time. I really appreciate it. If you know anybody that might benefit from this video, if you would share it. Um, otherwise, I hope to see you again next time and uh, that you have a lovely rest of your day. Be happy and healthy. Take care. Bye for now.